Hi, this is Allison Wolf, Director of Social Work Services for Behavioral Health Charlotte. Hi, my name is Amanda Green. I'm the Program Coordinator at Behavioral Health Charlotte. Today we're going to teach you about group facilitation. Psychoeducation at Behavioral Health in general, if the multidisciplinary team collaborates and identifies the needs of each patient and the current population and tailors the group schedules and content to best meet those needs. Psychoeducation can be delivered both individually and in the group setting. Why is it important? Education and skill building assist to change behaviors that are problematic or maladaptive, promote successful independent functioning, and studies show that patients who participate in psychoeducational or social skills training function better and have a reduced rate of relapse. When do we provide psychoeducation? It starts at admission, it continues throughout treatment, and throughout the discharge process. Patients benefit from psychoeducational groups that provide therapeutic structure and a supportive learning environment. Factors that influence effectiveness include the short length of stay on the inpatient setting, sometimes prevents progression through the normal stages of group development. Patients are often adult learners, which will influence how learning will occur. They often have established beliefs and values, fear of failure, and may require more time to learn, and the motivation and readiness to learn of the participants. Other factors include the level of pathology of the patients, the knowledge level and presentation method utilized by the group facilitator, and the ability to the facilitator to communicate clearly and promote learning in patients. Many of these factors are beyond our control, but the facilitator can use this information to anticipate the structure of group accordingly. Next, I'm going to talk to you about preparation for group. As the facilitator of a psychoeducational group, all eyes are on you. What you say and how you will use the allotted time will determine how effective your group is. The best way to begin is to consider what you are teaching and why. You have the honor and opportunity to assist people in changing their lives. To get started, you should follow an identified agenda. Agendas usually define the who, what, where, when, and how of the group. Participation of each group member is strongly encouraged, but it's never forced. It is essential to ensure and provide an atmosphere of trust, support, and encouragement. Group members should be invited to group with a welcoming approach to create a feeling of belonging and desire to attend. Members shouldn't feel forced to participate or their involvement will be negatively impacted. Ideally, patients should sit in a circle. So now we're going to get into your steps of group. The first step is introductions of both the facilitator and the group members. Ask group members to go around the room and introduce themselves. This way you know everyone's first name and can call them by name during group. Next, you'll start with the group expectations. This is your discussion or review of the group rules or norms. This will include the length of time that group will last, the issue of confidentiality, the purpose, benefit, and agenda. For instance, let participants know the only expectation of group is that everyone be respectful. Ask the group what respect means to them. This usually prompts discussions about what is said in group, stays in group, no cursing, etc. Next are your group objectives. These are things like what you expect to accomplish in the group and what the group will be learning or doing. Discuss how it is relevant to them. Let them know that their participation is desired. Your specified agenda is when the facilitator presents educational information. This is when the subject is discussed, directing the focus to the patients. Different skills or techniques may be used to assist patients with learning effective coping skills. For example, if your group is on anger management, you could start like this. Thank you all for being part of group today. I am interested in hearing ways you have been successful in managing your anger. The goal is to learn from one another what has worked in the past or ways you currently work on managing your anger. Can someone start by giving me an example of when they were angry and what they did to manage it? Next, we're going to give you some skills to facilitate the flow of group. The first one is active listening. Active listening is attending to verbal and nonverbal aspects of communication without judging or evaluating. This is to encourage the trust and your client's self-disclosure and self-exploration. 
So maybe you see one of the group members making eye contact with you. You might say, Brian, you look like you have something to say about anger management. The next skill is restating. Restating is saying in slightly different words what the patient has said to clarify its meaning. It's to determine if you as the leader has understood correctly the patient's statement to provide support and clarification. For example, Brian, I hear you say that when you were fighting with your wife, you left the house and walked around the neighborhood. Sounds like you removed yourself from what was making you angry and took time to think and cool down. The next skill is called linking. Linking is where you connect the work that patients do to a common theme in the group. This is to promote patient-to-patient -patient interaction. For example, you might say, has anyone else been successful at managing their anger by walking away from what was triggering them and giving themselves some time to cool down? Maybe a group member, say Sharon, then describes a situation where she tried to walk away and the person who was upset followed her, which led to an altercation. This leads us into empathizing. Empathizing is a practice of identifying with patients by assuming their frames of reference. It's to foster trust in the therapeutic relationship and support deeper levels of self-exploration. For this example, you might say, Sharon, I am sorry you were in that situation. That must have been tough for you. Not all methods of anger management are successful all the time. That's why we're talking about different approaches. We also can't control other people's anger. We can only control our own. Would anyone else like to give an example of when they were angry and managed it well? At this point, we are being sensitive to the group members' possible past trauma and not dismissing it, but just refocusing the group instead on moving into an individual intervention. The next skill is supporting. Supporting is providing encouragement and reinforcement to create an atmosphere to continue desired behaviors and beliefs. A group member said that he remembered a time when he was angry and went to the gym and ran five miles. He said when he got done, he wasn't as angry and had thought through a plan of how to handle the situation. The group leader, leader might say, Matt, that is excellent. That exercise helped you manage your anger. That is a great coping skill for anger management. Protecting is the practice of safeguarding patients from unnecessary psychological risk in the group. This is a skill where group leaders must redirect a discussion of past trauma back to the general theme of the group to protect that member. For instance, if a group member discloses a traumatic event, such as an assault, rape, being homeless, a domestic violence incident, then the group leader should encourage the group member to discuss that sensitive topic with their treating physician or therapist. This can be done in the moment or after group is over. Finally, we get to our wrap up. This is for questions, concerns related to the subject information and they're discussed and addressed before reviewing and ending the group. This is to prepare the group to end the session. Be mindful of the time schedule for group and about 10 minutes before the end, steer the conversation to a closing point. Do a quick recap of what was discussed and thank members for their participation.